Our students, Brian Proctor, the art teacher, back again with another lesson. And this one is going to be a long one because this one is a true drawing lesson. Now, what I've done was I started answering my emails again. I'm sorry, guys, um, for not answering my comments, not my emails. But I'm back on track now. And I've started answering my comments. So in the comments, I had about four people ask me to do some uh, drawings, not drawings, but show them how to do certain things. So in this video, I show these four people. I'm slowing down. <laughs> I'm trying to figure, make up my words. Uh, how to do the things that they asked me. And the four things that they asked me to do was how to draw, how to draw with stick figures. Now, I didn't understand that, but I worked it out. Um, placing the head on the shoulders. This um, young artist did not know how to do that. What was the other ones? Hands and forearms. They didn't know how to do the we It said his weakness was hands, putting hands on forearms and drawing both of them. And what was the other one? Um, drawing mannequins. So it's five. There's five different ones. Uh, drawing using the mannequins. I talked to him about that and I talked to the person about that and I showed him examples with that. And what was the other one? Arms, um, proportions for arms and legs and the muscles for those. So those are the five things that I drew. I showed you, I showed them how to draw in this video. And as I say, it's a pretty long, well, it's a long video. So if you are, have, if you are one that has trouble doing any of those, this video is definitely for, definitely for you. So go to the bathroom, get you some water, some chips, get you a couple pieces of paper because they will have a lot of learning to do today. All right, so let's get right on to it because as I said, it's going to be a long one. No need for a long intro. All right, so let's, let's jump into the lessons now. So the first one is uh, by sent by Chuck. Yeah, I can't even pronounce that name. I don't know if it's, it's, it's Japanese or Okinawan or it's Chuck W U. Anyway, it'll be here. C H U K W U N E D U. I don't know what that that. Yeah. So anyway, Chuck asked me, "Can you draw poses with stick figures?" Now, I don't do stick figures when I draw. And I'm not, I'm not sure on what you're asking. If you want me to show you how to just draw poses with using stick figures, or if you want me to show you how to draw a pose starting out with a stick figure. So I'm going to do both just because. But the thing is, with stick figures, there are two different type of stick figures. There is your standard, you know, kitty. I mean, um, elementary kind of stick figure. You know, and then there is more of your, I can learn to draw using stick figures like that. So it depends on which one you're talking about. Uh, are you trying to do like that stick figure action pose thing? Or are, like I say, are you trying to learn how to draw using um, stick figures? So just to do an action pose. I would not you do. I would not do this. You know. I don't know. Like you. You might be wanting to do some animation with the. Uh, you know. Stick figures. I don't know. I would get away from this one. <clears throat> your preference. But I would use this one more. Forgive me. It's early and I haven't eaten or drank anything yet. That way I can. If I'm going to turn the po the position. I can tilt the shoulders. So now this thing, I don't understand if this is your shoulder or your collarbone. So like I say, I don't use that type of um, teaching for learning how to draw or draw with stick figures. You know, and then you have, I forgot about that, you have the one like this that tells you where your elbows and your, your arms are and your knees and your feet. You know, so, I mean, that's getting closer, but I'll show you how to take a stick figure and draw an actual figure from it in a second. So, but because when you do action, you're going to tilt, you're going to lean, you're going to bend. So you can take this, which is represents the shoulders, I guess, tilt it over. This is this has got to curve sometime or it's not really considered action. This is not action. This is just a standard standing pose. But if I curve it like this and I do this and I, let's just say I do this. Put my point here. If I do this, okay, so that one, and then that's 
right there. See, like I said, I don't, I don't, I don't know what this really represents in the world of stick figure. And I do this, and I do this, point that, my foot, that, that, I forgot the point, and my foot, like that. That kind of gives you a little more action because you, you're tilting your torso and your, your, your hips, hip, hips. So, but the thing is, it's hard to foreshorten just a straight line. You know, it, you really just, you just do a, a, a shorter line, I guess. So, if I'm leaning the character down like this, like he's looking at me, and here's one arm, here's another part of the arm, here's one part of the arm, bicep, tricep, here's the forearm, like that. Here's my foreshortened uh, torso, and let's just say, I was going to have him crouching, but let's just say I, he's flying. Not even that. I was going. I, I'll still crouch him. I'll crouch him. Here's this, this, and then this. So yeah, it's kind of weird because if you make this short, it just it throws everything off. So I'm not sure if you just wanted poses with stick figures, or if you want me to show you how to draw from a stick figure. So I'll do that now because all you need to know is one twist. And the other, they both twist. I'm getting a, a marker. So you have this and this. So just twist these two, you know, to make your figure, give your figure a little action. So yeah, if he was, if he was like leaning down, then you're losing something. Or if he was flying, you're losing something. Or, you know, yeah. So that's one reason I don't do stick figures. So to do a stick figure, a character, a stick figure character, or to put, as I, as I like to say, to put some meat on the character, if I have a stick figure like this, this is the one I would use, this like T, and this is the most important part, this part, this is longer, this is shorter. That's going to be your entire body. So you want to do this kind of basically like this, okay? You want to keep that line and bring that, and bring that down. Bring that down to that upside down house. Okay? Then you're going to add. So one side of the, is going to be the outside. It's going to be the outside. The other side is going to be the inside of your arm or leg. And that is really, really simple to do a person. And let's just say this could probably be the center or the outside, depending on how you put it. That could be the outside line. You could bring the inside line in. And then your neck comes up, just a little box, and then your head on top of that. And then your feet. So that's how I would draw if I have to use a stick figure. So it would be the same thing with this. I would twist this, connect this like this. Maybe give that little house. The, the, the line has got to be at the center of that house. And I call it the upside down house because everybody draws a house when they're young. That's kind of like one of the first things you start to draw the house. So you have the roof, you have the center of the house, you have your door, if you want to put it in the center, window, window, okay? So when I really started studying the crotch, it kind of reminded me of that shape because, you know, superheroes had these underwear on like this. Back in the day, they stopped putting the underwear on some of them. So it was always that shape. So I said, okay, I'll use that shape as the part of the body. So when I taught myself to draw, I looked at things and I said, what is its shape like? Because I could draw a square, circle, and triangle, which is basically the, the foundation of all things, basically. You know, you stretch this out to make it a, um, a rectangle. You pull this out to make it a tube. And the poor old triangle doesn't get much love, you know, the pyramid, or, you know, you chop parts of it off to, you know, make some other shapes from it. But, yeah. Always try to use your shapes. So this is going to be the center line. The center line is always going to be at the roof. Then I will add this, add this piece, add this, and add that. So right off the bat, you have in a few seconds uh, fully, not fully clothed, but a full body of a person. Now, if I'm going to do a person like in clothes, I'm not going to really worry about the muscles because the clothes are going to cover that up. One other thing that I always do when I do, if I do this, I will put two little half triangles right there. Triangle, split it in half, one half here, and one half here. Okay, now, 
Later on in the video, I'm going to answer another question. Somebody asked me, why do I draw with a blue and red pencil? This is why. It's one reason why. You can see it better. When I need to, when I need to focus on something, you can see it better. I'll get into that later. So that, that's, that's my body right there, right? So if I say, okay, this is, this is, this is Tom, you know, Tom has got t-shirt on. He's got shorts on. He's got some socks. And he's got some some shoes on. Whatever shoes. So from that stick figure, I went and drew a whole body. Simply by adding some extra lines to that stick figure. And that's what I would do if I'm going to draw um using a stick figure poses using a stick figure like i said i don't really i know if you were just wanted to do stick figure action positions or you wanted to learn how to draw but now you know how to do both and it, it's really 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 simple just follow the steps so yeah follow the steps and then you you tell you know is is this person running this way is he running what 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 way is he is he running is he leaning and then you go from there i know that might be a little hard what i just did because if you're just if you're still just, if you're just new to stick figure draw if you're new to drawing then it's going to be hard to twist and turn your characters right away but yeah. He's running to do a karate chop. Yeah. Okay, so hopefully that answers that question. Like I say, I don't really do stick figures. If you want to draw a stick figure, I would use this the one with the, the, the T I T shape. Legs. Arms. Head. And as I said, just bring it down. Bring that little triangle here, turn those into legs, arms, little square here, rectangle, and put the head on top. All right, so hopefully that answered the question. Thanks for watching and commenting. All right, so let's get on to the next one. All right, this one is basically a question. It's not really a tutorial, showing a tutorial, but since it's on the same page, I want to answer that. And this is Shay Tries Drawing. And basically, Shay says, uh, why does inking of a drawing seem to ruin it? And the answer that I gave uh, Shay or this person was, let me, I'm, I'm still reading it. Um, what's the bottom? Um, I'm thinking that inking isn't good, isn't a good thing. I enjoy your videos. Okay, so inking is a great thing. If you can ink, if you can ink. And that the, the 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 answer that I gave to that it was a long I don't want to read the whole thing it was a long um, long comment question. If I'm drawing if I'm drawing something, I'm going to be loose like this. I'm flowing. My pencil is flowing. I'm loose. I'm not really concerned about making you know a great mistake at that point because. I can fix it. I can fix whatever, whatever is going on or wrong or that I don't like. I can fix it. So just a couple quick more lines. As I said, this was not, it, was, it wasn't one of the tutorials I was going to do or one of the questions I was going to answer, but since it was right there and for other people to do this too, you might have the same, you might have the same problem or question. Okay, Brian, just let's, let's slow down a little bit. So that, okay, now, people would say, okay, that, that's a quick drawing, that looks good. But if I get in here and I'm trying to ink this thing, let me draw a little face. He's looking back. He's looking back. He's sweating um, because, you know, he's being chased or whatever. People are shooting at him. So here's my pencil drawing. You know, it's really loose. It's fast. It looks good. So when I get in here and I try to ink it, 
I'm going to be nervous. I'm not a professional inker. If I was a professional inker, I could just and make this thing look good, add some more shadows, add some hatching, but I am not. I am a penciler first. The only reason I started inking because I, me and some friends, we started a comic book company when we were younger. So we didn't have money to hire inkers or anything. So what we had to do everything ourselves. So I had to learn basically how to ink. And again, there was nobody to show you, you know, oh, this is how you ink. We had to kind of like learn from, you know, example or, or watching other people do it. So I get nervous. Okay, if I spent like four hours on this thing, you know, and it's like the greatest drawing in the world. And I'm like, okay, yeah, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Now I have to ink it. Inking is so final. It is just so final. And... Even with the pencils, you get like some darker lines and you get some lighter lines and some thicker lines and some thinner lines. But when you put down ink on a, with a, a pen, you get one size line. And if you mess up somewhere, it just, it just, it hurts. It hurts your heart. And I just stopped talking. So... That is one thing about inking. If, if you're not a professional inker, if you're not a, a, a school skilled inker, then yeah, you can really screw up a drawing because you need stuff like line weight. You need, you know, you need to put your line, you need line weight. You need, um, probably put some shadow somewhere and with a, a with a, um, Regular pencil drawing. I can't ink and talk at the same time. With a regular pencil drawing, you don't, you don't, you're not really thinking about that. You're just, you're just inking or you're just drawing. I told you I can't talk and ink at the same time. I don't know why. Cause I'm not an inker. So you know, if you look at that arm and you look at this arm, it, it looks a lot, it looks a little better. So that, that's where you know that years of learning and training comes in, and. Um, if I like add, you know, some hatching or some, some um, feathering to it, it will look even better. But see, that's, that's my weakness doing stuff like that. That is my weakness. So that's one reason I say shameless plug again, Brian, shameless plug again, get a book, a book that you can do inking or um, you can do practice, you know, stuff in it, like, you know, inking shadow what not inking but drawing your shadow and so forth in it and it just helps if you have an old book that has stuff in it and you you can draw on it and i know when we we're young they say don't draw in the book don't draw in the book or write in the book but you know if you pay for it it's your book it's your book you know you can do whatever you want in the book and this is good paper so you can erase whatever you put in the book unless you ink it and it just gives you practice you know look at some inkers that you you like and then um Try to mimic their style, and then, you know, in time you'll get it. You might go through a lot of uh, drawings that you might mess up, but over time you'll get it. So that's one reason why some videos or some drawings don't look good with ink, especially mine. I don't like to ink mine on the fly. I usually like to ink it off camera and take my time. But, yeah, so there you go for that question. Why some? Why do some drawings look good? messed up when you ink them okay next next uh next uh um next next question give me a second let me pull it down pencil drawing free all right so edwin asked me can you make a video about attaching the head to the torso in different positions all right so that's pretty easy um if you know how to do the torso it's pretty easy and the torso is where's my red my red i like to start out with my red the torso is oval shape okay so you do this you follow the beetle steps the steps of doing the beetle and the beetle was how I discovered drawing the torso so it was like you have your oval you have your center line you have your T or your cross because this is going to come up you're going to have <clears throat> you're going to have this this is important you're going to have this little piece left over always have this little bump left over that is important Okay, so after that, you have your chest and stomach, so and then your line from here to here. 
which turns your chest. Okay, that, if you do that, if you follow these steps with, with these lines, you always have a good torso. Now, attaching the head to it, <clears throat> this is how I do it. You have this little bump here. This is going to serve as your shoulders as I uh, make it bigger later. So, at the top of this little hill, I'm going to put my chin. My chin is going to be right there. Let's do blue. My chin is going to be right there, and my head is going to attach to that. Because you don't want your head down into your shoulders unless you are bending down. Bending down, looking down, or uh, your, 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 tor your character is stooping down. So we have that. So let me do this with ink. Let me do this with a better ink pen. Now my desk is getting junky with papers and pens. So I have this. And a good way to do a head. If you're not good at doing heads, there are two ways to do a head. I'll do a man's head. You can do it square like that. It's in a line. Find out how wide your chin is going to be. Ink. My chin is going to be here. And I'm going to go up to the sides <clears throat> like that. And that is, well, there's no, there's kind of like a Y almost if I do a Y, but I'm not going to mess it up. And then just go straight up and then curve it at the top. And then if I'm doing a hero, then I'll take this line and go straight down. And here's my neck. Okay. Here's my nose. If you can't see that, here's my mouth. And here's my eyes. Ears. So now you have a head. So this is what I would do with this. You don't always have to draw the oval. Now, if I'm doing a female, I will do a V and then the head and then just kind of round that V off a little bit like that. And then her neck is not going to come straight down. Her neck is going to come in to her head like that. So I'm doing like this, almost like drawing up an egg. And then there is your female. No hair, no ears. So we have this. I'm, I'm going to ink this. We have this. Boom, chin up, up, and around. There's my head. So we have this circle of this mountain. What I do is I take, I make a V, the letter V, boom, to the top of that mountain, like that. And then I will bring that neck up. This is crooked because it's just crooked, right to that head. It's now attached. Now, with this little teeny mountain, I will make this mountain a little bigger. And these lines here that we have, which represent the collarbone, I will take from this point right here at the top of that mountain all the way to the end of that collarbone. Those are my shoulders. Those are your shoulders, which go to your delt, which goes to your arm. Now, if I wanted to make it more massive, I would raise those that uh, shoulder up a little bit more like that so it's pretty simple so if you are doing like a side position it's not going to be round it's going to be more of an oval like this an oval it's going to be more of a uh, capsule shape shall we say um not wide like an, an oval or circles more like thinner so same thing applies well, different applies so it's going to go back this is your back and this is your neck is going to ride right up here and right down there because you have your collarbone that comes across you have this it's going to come across into your delt right here so you're going to have that now when i do a profile 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 God, I just, I just, I just, I just, I just lost it. Okay, profile. Quick, easy profile. Square. <clears throat> and the plus symbol. Now, okay. Which has got to be really even. So I take this, curve it in, and I take this. It's like almost doing the like the letter P reversed. I guess it would be Q. Like that, and let me do it. You'll see it. This is a quick, like that. Okay. Now, if I if I um, halfway is halfway, so I can put my eyes here, my nose here, my mouth 
there and my neck here. So you have the, it comes from under the chin, <clears throat> chin, and then back, and it goes all around. It goes down the back because your traps go up here and up your neck. So you have these two muscles that kind of go right up to your ears, and you can use these guidelines <clears throat> to place your uh, features, like the halfway point is the eye, the center part is where the ear goes. So that kind of makes it easy to do a profile. So just remember, these are your traps. They go up behind your neck. If you can see through it, it would be like this, the trap muscle. And it goes like right underneath of your cranium skull. So let's just say I do the torso uh, oval. And I'll center that. And I'll take that center and then I'll give him a chin. This has got to come out more because that's just the way the head goes. So your neck is going to go come down and in to that collarbone, which is right here. This is going to go right down into the back of your shoulders. So it's basically all about the torso. You don't want too long a neck. And then I say you have those two muscles that like these two muscles that I never really draw. Here's your, I don't know what this part is called, with your collarbone, a little dip right here. They go down here. And this basically is your traps right here that goes up. And then there's this the traps are <clears throat> your traps are like this. And they go up behind your neck. And it leaves kind of like these little indentations. And then you have your like your Adam's apple and some other stuff that works in between here and i should be doing this a little bigger i don't know why i'm doing it small but hopefully you guys can see that um if you're looking from the top you're not going to see it if you're looking down you're just going to put your head your head back a little bit not forward i used to put it forward i guess it depends on if you're leaning because you still want to see the collarbone your traps, your delts, and a split for your chest, like that. So it's here. You want you don't want to go past this this piece right here. So if I'm looking down, and how would that go? You have your brow for your eyes. You won't see too much of your eyes. Back of your head, to the top of your head, yeah, kind of like that. I don't like drawing with ink because, as I, as I said in the other one, it's too, it's too final. And that's what I say when you draw somebody from the top, or if they lean, they're leaning down. There's always this this diamond shape, this diamond shape. So the more of this diamond shape you see, the more that you see the top of that person, whether he's flying towards you or whatever. Now, if I lean them down more, or if he's let's, let's do this. Let's see if I can do this. Let's change this whole thing around a little bit. Let's just say this guy was flying <clears throat> toward me. And I wanted to see just a little bit of his, his uh, abs. I would just do something like this. Like that. You can see a little bit of the abs and maybe a leg here, a leg there, and maybe a foot here and a foot there. Now he could be flying, he could be standing straight up. But if you just wanted to see some of the rest of the body, you just kind of like add these heels on top of that. But torso, again, torso, I'm trying to think. Same thing if I'm going to do the head. It all revolves around this, 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 this. Because your neck is going to come up like a V. This is the bottom. Your neck is going to come up at the, I like a, a V this and then you put your head <clears throat> there remember don't put your head your chin past this 
So if I did this, it's going to go right down, and then your your delts. Remember, you're going to your delts, your traps are going to be here. Chest and delts. So if I do this. There's not too many angles. You just know that your, your neck comes right off of your side of your chin in most cases. And then down to that V, down to that little dip right here. And like I said, a lot of times I don't draw these muscles that come like that. You can give a little indication, but I don't. And then your traps come right up the back of your neck. You got your front, you got your top, you've got kind of like your angle here. There's not much more, just remember this. Let me do one more. Maybe like from the side, I guess. Torso from the side. <clears throat> you, got, you have to have this, these, um, the beetle, as I call it. You have to have that. Your, your, your cross, your mountain or tunnel, your chest is going to go right below that. This line from here to this point, <clears throat> to this point right here, to this point right here, where that circle touches, where they touch that circle, it curves down. That tells you where your chest is going to turn. So this is already over there, so your chest is going to turn here. All right, that's important. So you have this little piece here, this little dip. You have your collarbone. This dip determines where that V is going to come out and that V is going to stop right at circle. Then you go up and then you put your oval however you want to put it on your keeping in mind that you don't want that chin to come past this top of that circle. Then you have your shoulders. You can make your shoulders bigger this is right, and you got your circles for your delts. And something I used to not do is I would always put my delts, let's use red again. This is why I use red and blue pencil. I used to put my delts off to the side because when I when I started learning to draw, I did this, the beetle, and I always put my delts right off the side of it. Even when I turned them to the side, <clears throat> like that, I would put the delt off to the side and later on I couldn't see it because I never really stopped to take in the drawing that's why I tell people when you draw it before you ink or before you say you finish or you before you add that hours of detail stop walk away from your drawing and then come back and then you'll be able to see mistakes if you have any mistakes if you are that good then you should have a YouTube channel of your own if you're that good that you have no mistakes so anyway you bring it in, you bring it in. So this line is going through it, not it's over here and this line, this line is not going through it. So you're going to bring it in and then you have your, your, your twisted delt. But anyway, I'm thinking of the next lesson. Just have this V, that's most important. V comes to the circle, top of the circle, goes straight up. Then you have your head, you can put your head however you want your head to be. Remember, oval, if you can't do the oval, do the square. Center line right here is going to determine where your chin is, from up, up, and then that. And remember, if you're doing a superhero, that the, the neck needs to come straight down and then turn. Well, once you hit this point, you start turning, turning it in. You start turning it in. If you're doing a little kid or somebody younger, and I'll use this little tiny example in ink. So here's my head. 
This is the V here for the collarbone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my neck in more like that. He's not as powerful because his neck is not along the side of his chin. And same with women, except women, I curve, it's gonna get a curve. Remember you got that, that V, curve it. Her neck or the female neck is gonna come out and then it curves like that. Whereas the man's is gonna come down and you have that big mountain like this. So, and then women's female, female's shoulders kind of come up a little bit like that. And then it goes down with the small arms. You have the breasts and then the sides. All right, so I'm thinking that's going to be it for adding a neck from different angles because basically it's just your torso, different angles of your torso, your center line. Wherever you have that center line, you're going to have that V, that collarbone. And remember that V comes up to your neck. However you turn it, you, you have to have this. You have that that takes care of a lot of problems in drawing the torso from any direction. So just in, just because I'm looking at this, let's do the side. Chest is going to come from under the arm like that. Your um, abs are going to be like this. These are your actual abs under here. And it comes down. So after this, becomes your love handle and after that is the buttocks and this goes right down into the crotch like that whole nother video all right so moving on hopefully that did help you to understand on how to put the head on the angles because as i say once you draw this you're good to go as where to place the head because it's a guideline that will never let you down all right so next video next video <laughs> next lesson all right, so this next one is from Naveed. I'm not going to butcher up whatever the last name, your last name. And it's like, hello, I recently bought a 12-inch wooden mannequin. I'm a beginner and want to learn figure drawing uh, with the help of the wooden mannequin. Could you please make some videos about that, how to draw with a wooden mannequin? All right, so I had a wooden, wooden mannequin. This was the answer that I gave him. I had a wooden mannequin when I first started out. And that's because back in the day, they didn't have the kind of um, dolls, let's call it a doll because I can't think of you know, to that. They didn't have the dolls that they have today that, that, that looks more like the body. Now, what I would do is, I mean, if, if, if you want to do like more wooden mannequin stuff, then that's fine. But if you're trying to do more anatomy stuff, I would spend money on something that represents the body and I'm looking around because I have so many things that I have to get up now and grab and I'm just lazy but let me get up and I'll show you some of the things that I have that you should be getting if you want to learn how to draw the figure all right so we have things like this nowadays that give you a better body shape and gives you a really great you know range of motion I'm looking at this instead of looking at the camera. My bad. You might not be able to afford some of this, but just get some cheap stuff like this. This this is my go-to guy when I try to show you. You know, you know, I love this. I love this when it came out. But when I saw this guy, I mean, this is about as good as you can get. I mean, there's still some things that that they it doesn't do, like your shoulders. You know, don't you know 100% do right because this scrunches up when you lift your arms up but i mean it is really really close you know if you can't afford that get you a you know old old doll you know that this it's still better than a wooden mannequin some of these don't like uh, this I mean, his leg doesn't bend this was a snake eyes this was a 12 inch snake eyes and it was just it was just jacked up you don't believe me see the symbol on his arm a Roger, a Roger, a Kashi, a Roger, whatever, yeah. I knew it. It was in my mouth. It just got stuck in my throat. A Roger, yeah, anyway, the dust on this thing. You see the dust? Because it just it just kind of sits there. All these things just sit there. I have so much stuff. It just sits there. You know, even females. You know, you could buy this female. I like this female because it had like a this like killer female shape. I'm like, wow, you know. So, and then it bends and then the articulation is not bad. You know, the more articulation you get, the more um, money you're going to have to spend. And, of course, look at, I cut the hair. This had long hair, and it was just in the way, and this was not, like, something I was going to address. It was just something, the dust, <laughs> I was just trying to use. 
I know you might know that somebody might know that symbol that something girls I don't know if you focus on that symbol or not but anyway there's a symbol right here it's like a GG I don't know so yeah there are so many different things out there in the world today pull them down so you can see them that are a lot better than the wooden dummy but since you bought the wooden dummy and the bad thing about the wooden mannequin I don't call it a wooden dummy the mannequin is the that it limits the range of motion so let me start to draw some things as dust without you having to do use or depend so much on the mannequin and as I just showed uh, in the, the hair is just falling all out she's so gonna be bald eventually I mean that thing has got to be 20 years old or more a female anyway um, I was going to say something and it just jumped out of my head. That's why I was going to jump back in. Okay, so using the body. The body is shapes. I always say shapes, breaks down. Shapes, there are certain shapes. Let me grab my book again because it's quicker. I'm not doing the shameless plug. I'm just making it a little quicker for me to, so I don't have to draw them. Where is it? And if you just take these shapes and you break these shapes down, and put them together these shapes right here these, I mean just simple to draw shapes you know we, we're scared to draw you know something like this but we can draw a shape and you take these shapes and you put them together then you have um, a figure in any position that you can imagine you just have to learn how to turn these shapes around turn them twist them so forth and so on so let me show you when I'm drawing I start out with the torso the mannequin, I, I, and I had a wooden mannequin. I have no idea where that thing is at. I, I used to teach at a um, drawing school. I think I may have left it because I had a wooden hand. I know I left that. The mannequin might be packed up somewhere. It might be. I think I still have it. It's packed up. But torso, which is oval. Your hips, which is, or your waist, which is a rectangle. Your hip, which is just the upside down house. Your head which is just an oval, your arm, uh, tricep, bicep, which is just a rectangle or oval, and then this one, which is, and somebody asked me how to do arms, and I'm gonna show you using this, but for, for just this purpose sake, like this. Cone or long diamond. Same thing with your, your legs. I'm gonna make them square for now. Or rectangle for now your knee can be and you could put an elbow there you could have like that and these shapes once you put these shapes close together you say oh I have a person and then the foot is just like a triangle half a triangle you know chop it off or you can just use the whole half a triangle like that you have a person so if I took this person or took this shape and this is before you get into muscles and the end so forth and I tell people don't try to draw muscles until you understand the actual muscle because muscles move I mean it's nice to draw that but when this guy would throw his arm up if he threw his arm up his bicep would go up and if he bent that arm that bicep would flex which means this part would twist over and it would pull the chest so there's a lot of motion in muscles so don't try to do muscles until you got the body right but if you shape the body right it will look like it's really muscular so as I say if, if you take this shape and I uh, take this arm or take this piece of shape and I put it up I'm now moving my character if I take this here let's just say I do this here's my knee Like that, I am now moving my character. Let's see if I can block that out without blocking that out. So now I'm, I'm moving the character. So you really don't need a mannequin or um, a figure in the beginning. In the beginning, if you just stay with these shapes and you learn, like I say, how to twist them and bend them, then you'll start drawing really, really quickly. Same thing when I was talking about the the stick figure and then you turn that into a person 
and then you start moving those shapes. That's why I say anybody can draw because we can write. We can draw. It's just that people, when you're young, kids love to draw. Kids love to take paper, uh, pencil, and just write on paper, write on the walls. And the thing that happens is, because let's just say me, I'm young and i am got a scribbling, I've got my pencil, I'm scribbling on some paper. My parents don't know how to draw. They don't know anything about drawing. So they can't help me. You know, they like you know, they, they can't help me. Some will discourage your your kid. People will discourage your kids because they don't know how to draw. They they don't see uh, any benefit in drawing. Um, so and they can't really help. So it's nothing I can do for you. So I just let you just burn it out. You know, others like if I draw on the wall or refrigerator, don't you do that? Don't you ever do that? So of course, in my head as a child, drawing is bad. So encourage your child. If your child, if you if you're old and you have a child and they want to learn how to draw, please encourage them somehow, some way. Buy them the cheapest, you know, material you can. And let them watch Brian's videos. They learn how to draw. So yeah, don't discourage because there is so much in art nowadays. If you look at a label on a soup can, there's a, there's a picture of something that is that's art. You know, this you know designing. This, you know, this is this is art. Art is everywhere. This ball, this is art. So, you know, it's not about oh, we're just drawing, you know, superheroes because the the view of the artist back in the day was like oh, you'll be a painter and when you die you'll make money from your paintings, but you'll be dead. So, but no, nowadays everything is art. Everything is art. So, don't discourage your child. Okay, so like I say, I have this. You have this. I don't even know what the wooden dummy looks like nowadays. I would try to draw it. But I, you know, I don't, I, don't, I really don't know. It's been so long since I even messed with a wooden dummy. But if you have these, if you have this, and you start just using just your basic shapes, since you're a beginner, I'm not going to even try to draw muscle. Use your basic shapes, and then you'll be able to draw figures. Now, like I say, if I, if I, and I should have used the delt. I'll, I'll get into this more when I do the other answer, the other question. If, if you do this. And you keep your shapes like muscular. Take this and bring this down. And so you would connect these. Eventually you would connect these. You would just draw this connected to that. You would draw this uh, oval, you know, on top of that. So I didn't connect them because I wanted you to see the actual shapes. And you do this and you just, when you know where to go in and out at, this character looks more muscular. Now I could go a little wider, you know, without having to know exactly where every muscle is and how it goes and so forth, especially if you're putting clothes on the character. If you're putting clothes on the character, don't worry about the muscle, get the shape right. Because if I put like armbands on this guy and uh, whatever, some straps on this guy. He's a soldier. Maybe you're not doing like the comic stuff, but I'm just saying if I do, and it's the right eye, straps on this guy and a belt and some some boots on this guy. All that muscle is covered up. So yeah, don't don't try to worry too much about that. Learn your your, your shapes and your angles. A cylinder is a cylinder. This triangle is a triangle. This is an oval, so no matter how I turn it, it's going to be round. Unless I turn it to the side, which is going to make it a little more slimmer. This upside down house is going to be more, if I'm going to look down on it, it's going to be round. Remember the body is round, the body is not flat. That's going to be this. I'm going to put my legs right here, same thing. I'm going to put this, my uh, cylinder, or oh, yeah, my Tuna can is what I call it because it reminded me of a tuna can, which is, could be just your belt. On top of that, you put the oval, and then you have your collarbone, which we just went over in the other one. You're having a V, which means you're seeing more down on it. You're putting that head inside of that shoulder. And then you have your hands, arms, your hands. And then you can draw. So just remember these shapes. Just remember these shapes. Turn them, twist them, bend them. Stay with the stay with the um, squares and triangles for now. If this came out and up, it would be more like the cylinder. 
Practice your shapes. Always practice your shapes. And then I make a triangle out of it because it's easier. Then you just chop it off where you want to put your ankle and then you put your foot there. And the foot, you can either do the triangle or you can do the wedge. And that's just this. I'm doing that again because it's really messy. Triangle, half a triangle, I'm sorry, half a triangle. And you can just bring this straight out. And then you have your wedge. You can bring that like that and then that. And that could be a foot. Turn to the side a little bit. For now, for the beginning, you round that toe off, maybe get a few a little wrinkle in the crease in there. Bring this up a little bit to represent that. What is it? Is it the end step? And then your heel. Or you could keep it flat. But again, shapes, shapes. I'm gonna do a book. Somebody's gonna beat you, somebody's gonna get my, all my knowledge and put a book out and be a bestseller. And I'm gonna be pissed because I was just slow to do this book. So what I'm gonna do a book anyway eventually telling you how to do that so again with the mannequin don't depend on that mannequin because all your drawings will be stiff because a mannequin how, I, if i could remember how the shape of that mannequin is but i know they have this and then they have that and then they have the like the little mannequin hands the little kind of hands like this I don't, yeah, I think they had the ball here, the ball with the little line, because I, I think one of mine got a little really, really loose. Now, you can use that. I mean, it's good for drawing cylinders. That I think that would probably be the one of the, per the best things to do. You can learn how to draw your cylinder when you bend your character or when you, bend, when you do the arms. It becomes more cylinders. And that's one of the most important things about doing the arms and legs is to how to do those cylinders. So I'm going to say that's going to be it for the wooden mannequin. Buy a toy, even if you buy like a little Wolverine toy, something that can bend a little bit. I would buy a Spider-Man or Black Panther or somebody that just has like just a one piece suit. I wouldn't buy anything with belts and and guns and all of that kind of stuff on it the best you can is something like i said just skin tight suit you can get probably more than eight dollars or nine dollars toy just it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to you know be close enough to the anatomy or to the real body more than the wooden dummy so yeah get that some thought you have to spend money on yourself too if you, this is a goal for you you have to spend money on yourself all right, how long is this video? 55 minutes. But it's a lesson. It's a lesson. You might get something out of it. All right, so next is, and I have to do a, a thumbnail, a catchy thumbnail. Okay, so this is Stacy Tries Drawing. Did I do, did she write me? Did I do one for you earlier? So, okay, maybe I did. I don't know. I'm not sure. So, did I say Stacy? My glasses are Shay. Shay Tries Drawing. Did I do one for you, Shay? I don't know. My glasses are kind of like messed up and my laptop is way, way up there. Okay, why do you draw in red pencil then outline in blue? Okay, I'll show you that in a minute. Hmm, can I use 3D glasses with your with this video? No, you can't. I don't know, I never tried that. Uh, I can never make arms and leg muscles look right. The person I show my drawings to say, I draw everything muscular. Well, that's because I'm studying muscles. I have, I have like a hundred drawing books and anatomy books and still can't get it right. I'm trying to find the proportions of the arms and leg thickness. Also, what is the width of the chest comparison to the head? The height proportions are everywhere in every drawing book, but not with proportions. Okay, Shay, did I do one for you already? Did you write me? But if you did... Right, man, I did it for you. Now you got two for one. I'm not sure. My brain. So basically, uh, you're having trouble with proportions. And I think by doing that, I showed you the difference while doing a red and a blue pencil. It's because if I need to draw something else, then I'll use I'll switch colors so that I'll, I'll know. And if I drew the whole thing in red or blue, like this here, and I wanted to put clothes on them, then I can use my red pencil 
to to actually be like my final line so if I inked it I'm inking the red pencil or blue pencil or whichever one I use as a final line this is why I use two different colors if I could use three colors or four colors I would but these are good because they are non photocopyable as in if I photocopy a drawing on black and white they won't show up so I can mess up and that's part of the drawing uh, being loose and you know when you ink you're, you're nervous and you're stressed and you're like oh I gotta get this right and your hands are tight yeah so this is why I use pencil number one this is why I'm a penciler and why I use the two different colors so uh, let me look over this again make the leg muscles look right okay if you again if you don't have if you don't have a grasp on proportions and making it don't try to do don't try to do muscles please I'm telling you don't try to do muscles if I'm drawing something like this and this arm is like this and this arm is like this you know if I even if I did good muscles it's not going to look right so get your proportions get your proportions down right my little head is like that and I got you know my house and one leg and another leg you know get your proportions right first before you try to add muscle you know, try like some anime stuff where it's just like, you know, they're just, it's, it's slim-ish, but I mean, you know, it's, it works. Not even anime, just, just use a square here. I'll show you that in a second. And then you can shape it off into what you want. But, okay, let's, let's talk about proportions. I'll use some more paper. In a lot of books, they'll say, okay, you got seven heads or eight heads or whatever heads like if I take this thing here and I say okay this is the head so lose my pen let's use use a marker where's my marker there it is. so if I say okay this is gonna be one two three four five six seven eight what if I'm drawing a woman what if I'm drawing a child or what if I'm drawing somebody sitting down? Or what if I'm drawing them running or bending? That does not really help you any. So that's one of the things in the books that just, just, just really doesn't help you too much. So you have to, what? You have to know your character or what you're drawing. You know, the age that you're drawing this character. It could be drawing a kid or it could be drawing a woman and so forth. Um, what, that's what one reason I always start with the torso. Let me do a, a long, and this is going to be a, a more of an adult. Let's torso right here. Then, like I said, I'll do the, my waist, and I'm connecting these. Then I will do my hips. Then I'll do my legs. Now from here, you can say, okay, so this is this wide, right? So I'll do this, which I should have did first, but I didn't. So here, here's my shoulders, right? It come, coming off of that top of that T, right? So I'm coming up. You remember, I have you see, have this left. So here's my V from this point up. Now, how big do I want my head? Is this going to be a superhero? Is this going to be a regular guy or, or whatever? So this is going to tell you, just like if I did a, the female. If I do a female, I'm going to use the, my diamond shape, my diamond shape. I do this. And then I'll put a line here, and then there's my two diamonds right there. That's a female body. So if I rounded that off like this, that's going to be my female body. Now I will chop off right here and here for her arms, for her delts. And then I will say this is her head. Now this is my shoulder length right here. Because she can't have wide shoulders unless you're not, not even she Hulk has that. So this is the female body right here. Let's do this. This is the bottom of the crotch, and this is where the legs come out at. Okay, got that? So these are where her arms are going to come out. And I, and I can slim this out more. But that's basically how I start, and I'll slim this out more, depending on you know the size of the breasts. Slim it out more. So that's my female body right there from that. X cross. Now, this is my shoulder length right here. So from that, and this is one reason I say put the head on last, except for maybe two videos in, that I, or the last video I think it was, where I did the head first because I needed to 
have the size of the head. So I have this left over. So I can say to myself, and you gauging it with your eyes, you can say, okay, I need my head this big. Okay, no, that's too big. This is like a space suit bubble. So you kind of just kind of gauge, and there's your center right there. So even at that, you can have your, your, your because the shoulders, woman's shoulders come up like this. They come up, and your neck also helps determine your size. So then I have my V right there, and then I will put her head. I'll just keep going because somebody, I, when I draw, I'll draw like this. I'll just continue. And somebody asked me a long time ago, why do you keep doing that? Because I'm trying to get the size that I want, and once I get it, I will darken it, darken it like that. And I'm like, okay, that's the size I, I want, you know, versus being way up here, way out here. So then I will just kind of like figure out the size, I keep playing until I get that right size and I say, okay, that's that's fine for me. You know, yes, you got big hips, you can have smaller waists. I'll always go back in and tweak females. Because, yeah, you tweak them until you get that right size. So, with the man's head, it's the same thing. You kind of gauge by just drawing continuously, drawing that size of that oval and then you take it down to the neck depending if you're drawing a superhero, you're drawing a mailman, you're drawing whatever. And that line has to come straight if the, if the head is looking straight at you. If not, yeah, no, it won't go straight. Then again, shoulders, add my shoulders, more shoulders, and then my arm. Now, the thing is, sometimes I'll make them too long. Yes, I will. Like, this guy's really, really long. But I'm going to gauge this. This is, this is the abs coming in like that. I'll give him less waist less waist and this comes down to the crotch so I pulled them up a little bit now at the crotch so if I draw the arm the what does that come this if I'm doing the bicep <clears throat> it's gonna kind of like be right in the middle of this once I do the forearm the forearm is gonna stop the wrist is gonna stop at the crotch That's going to be the length of your arm, depending on, you know, again, what you're drawing. If you're drawing an alien, it could be different. If you're drawing Reed Richards, it could be different. But if you're, you know, if you're drawing just a standard person, you're good. So after that comes the hands. So the legs, now you have to kind of guess the leg length. What I'll do is I'll do this oval. Like that. And I'll kind of say, mm, that looks, you know, you, you guess it. it. A lot of this is about practice and uh, not guesstimating. It's, like a pra it's more like practice. And I'll do this. I'll do this right here. I'll put this little muscle there. And that kind of tells me, when I loop it around, if this goes too low, that tells me, oh, that's, that's not right. So I wouldn't say this is halfway, maybe a little more, more than half the leg. But just is something I learned from me. Then I put my knee there, and then I put my other part of my leg, which is going to be the same length as this. This is my foot. Same thing here. You want to kind of keep them uniform. If you have to do it, do if you're draw, trying to draw perfect, then draw these lines that goes across, so you'll know where your knee is going to fall, and. Your ankle, and it's probably crooked because I always draw at this angle. You you always see my paper. When I start drawing, you see my paper at an angle. I can't draw like that. I can't even write like that. I have to turn my paper, and then I write from the side. So, your proportion. Now, as far as the thickness of the legs and the arms, again, are you drawing a superhero? Are you drawing a person? Start out with just drawing your cylinders first. As thick as you want them. That way you won't have to worry about doing the muscles first. Uh, then when you say, okay, now that is a little too thin for me. I want them to have big arms. Then extend that cylinder. 
a little bit more. Before you put any detail, before you start inking, before you do anything, you can do that. Same with the legs. You know that your this is going to be the thickest, <clears throat> widest part of your leg. Your leg's going to come out, it's going to go out, and it's going to go, going to go back in at the knee. This is big muscle here, like that. Now, I could show you the muscles, but if you're having uh, with troubles with proportions, that's going to mess you up. So I'm not going to show you basically how to do the muscles. I'm doing them because it's a habit for me. I want you to get those proportions right. It's going to be a visual thing. So if I drew something like this and put my head here and I put my arm here. Right away, you'll say, okay, that arm is too long. So you're going to have to, if you think this is right, this needs to be the same length as that. Same thing as the leg, same length, same length. The arm is going out. You stop. If you're not sure, stop, turn it over. Look at something else for a second. You might not have time to go get something to eat. Turn it back over and you'll say, okay, that looks right. That looks right. So let me put the other one here, which is the same length. Unless you are doing, you know, perspective shot where uh, foreshortening. So this is not going to be too big. This is just your upside down house. Remember, you have your tuna can is what I call it for the... And that's not going to be too big. Just think of a belt. Just think of a nice thick belt that sits right there on top of your underwear. And these are just your superhero underwear. And then you have your legs. Again, when you draw something, if it looks wrong, it probably is. Walk away. Come back and then check it out. See if, it's, if it is wrong or right. Whenever you bend that leg, like I said, because these are the same length, whenever you bend that leg back, they're going to be the same length. It's going to stop right here, and your foot is going to, is your heel is going to be sitting on your butt if you ever do squats. Because these, this, and this are the same length. Uh... Reading your thing. Yeah, drawing books, a lot of drawing books I don't like. I used to buy drawing books like crazy because I kept looking for the right book that was going to tell me these things, but they don't. Let me give you an example of a drawing book. All right, let me show you this. This is a drawing book. You know, I, so I used to buy a ton of these things. So they start out with this, right? Then they take this and they go from here. And they take this and they go from here. Okay, what happened five steps from here to here? L let's see if you can see this in close up. Look at the muscle structure on this guy. Look at the step before that. What happened between that and that? And then you go to that and then you go to that. And see, a lot of drawing books are like that. They, they would show you these. Okay, first you start here and then you start. Let me see if I can find another example. And... I, I, you know, like I said, I used to buy books and books to find out what happens in between that gap that you're giving me because I have no idea how you got from that to that. You know, as they got better, they did do a little better job, you know, with, but from this to this, you know, and then to that, you know, and then from, you know, this stick figure to that, that's a big jump from this to this to that, that's they're just too big of jumps. And just follow up, you know, with more of your pages. Add some more. Add a couple more pages to your book so that we can understand from this to this to this to that. You know, there's 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 something missing. And that was one of the things that I always... I wasn't going to show you the cover of these books. <laughs> I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I showed you the cover of these books. You know, there was always something missing. So I would buy all these books hoping to find out that, you know, that missing link, that, that, that fountain of youth. And never could find it. So then I would just do it myself. I would say, okay, how did he get from this to that? And just kind of study the body. So as far as proportions, that's something you're going to have to do. Because 
I try to answer questions, and I I said that earlier. I apologize for for not. It's been a while since I started answering comments or even reading comments because life throws a brick at you and hits you in the head, puts you in a coma for a couple of days. But then you wake up and realize, did I forget something? So I'm going to start answering all because I used to answer all all of my comments, you know. Because if you guys can take time to write, I can take time to read and and write back to you guys. Thank you for for that. So. Um, as I always say, drawing is a depends thing. It depends on what you want. I don't know what you want. If you say to me, how do I draw Superman bloody nosed and arm tore off laying in the streets of New York at 12 midnight and it's raining? Yeah, I can draw that. I can show you exactly how to draw that from this angle from that. You know, but when you say teach me how to draw a stick figure, that's kind of hard. So, yeah, proportion wise, if you measure, you just keep in mind what I did here. Starting out with the torso, shoulders are going to determine how big the head is. You have to have that center line. It goes up. The head is going to be on that center line. How much neck do you want? Uh, men is going to like straight down. Women's going to curve around and then down. That's just the women's shoulder. I didn't make the woman, so you know don't don't blame me. Yeah. So that torso is going to determine the size basically of everything and the bottom is going to be your rib cage because your rib cage is like this you have that where your abs are once you pass that circle it's going to come like this is going to be the love handles love handles or obliques so you're going to have this boom like that on these edges you're going to bring your obliques in like that and that's going to go down into the crotch so it's going to be like this and then your legs, your buttocks are like this, and your legs come up like that. And that's more for the man. I mean, they just have a different different hip hip shape to it. And then, of course, boom, boom, boom. V for the neck. Head. Delt, delt. Arm, arm, like that. And you know, I, I lost a little bit of um, the tuna can here, but this is the actual meaty part of the structure that comes down and this comes in like this because this curves in like this this means your stomach is going to come in it's not going to go straight down like that you have this that curves in like that and goes down so your stomach is going to actually curve in as well if i didn't just screw that up so as far as proportions Muscles, please don't try to draw the muscles until you get the proportions right. Use your cylinder shapes, so forth, before you start to draw muscles. I was gonna say this. This is this is some way that I draw. I draw like this. If I'm drawing in my comic book, say here's my panel. So I want people in here. I'm going to draw basically the the, the square. The whole thing is going to be a square. Because your panels are small. If I'm doing something large, like a big panel, then I'll do that. So if I'm drawing like this, these are, I'll turn it that way. These are, these are, this is what I would do for my people in the panel. I'm drawing the head first. Okay, I can draw the, draw the head first. If you want to draw the head first. But the bodies are going to be basically square like this because they're so small. Then if I need to, I will torso and the hip using the oval then I'll know okay I put my leg out here this is where my delt's going to go I need to bring that shoulder out a little bit more here's my center line that's what I would do I know that was so small so let me just do that again I'll do this and uh, you know whatever however if the person is bending forward or whatever so that's going to be my my shorthand of you know this person jumping and got a ball in his hand the stick person that I don't do I'll do this first this is going to represent the body this is going to be my head I'm just I'm going out of sequence so that you can understand what I'm doing then I will put my torso however the size I want that torso and that's going to determine the rest of that body so my torso is here my head is right it's fitting the torso I'm going to have that center line coming down following that curve I'm going to remember I have a little bit of waist there and I'll just do this because the drawings are so small like that. I'll do this for my uh, hips like that. Keeping in mind center line. Here is my crotch like that. Then I will go and add my beetle to it. 
Here's my arm coming off. Here's the other arm. Maybe it's going up. And I put my leg, one leg down. And as I say, um, when you, it's a, it's a what? It's a practice thing. It's a feel kind of thing. You got you, you have to feel it, how long your proportions are going to be. And that's why I don't like to ink until way, way later. And I stopped inking off camera. I started inking off camera because the ball is a little bigger, brother, a little bigger than that. However, the hand is. So that's how I would do when I'm doing my quick, quick. If I'm just going to do a pinup, then I will do the whole like this kind of thing. But if I'm doing action, more action, you know, in a small action, I will follow those rules right here. Those steps, not really rules, but those are steps that I use. But again, with the neck guy line right there at that V, that neck is still going to go there. So that's a, that could be another way when you start drawing, but you you you'll know the head by the size of the torso, and also, yeah, this is gonna be a long video. So if you stayed, if you're still with the video this long, thank you, thumbs up to you, thumbs up to you. You're learning, you're learning, you're learning more stuff in this hour and a half than you would have learned in a month in school, or you know, a thousand dollars of drawing books. All right, so let's move on, guys. I, I, I have uh, maybe one more, two more. Okay, so that was the muscle proportions. Why I use blue and and, and uh, blue and red hands and forearms. So I'm going to do that one. So one last thing. This is my character that I'm drawing. Put that T-shirt on him or whatever jersey shirt on him. So by using this blue, I know exactly. what I'm going to ink. Right, so this is why I use two colors because it makes it easier when I get ready to do what I have to do and all the scribble lines. Now I know exactly what lines I want to use and then when you ink it, you get nervous and you're like, ah, I messed up. Because if you mess up, there's no going back. And that is why a lot of ink drawings don't look so good, as good as the pencil drawings, let's put it that way. Because a lot of times with me, I'll say to myself, oh, maybe I can add a little shadow here. So if you notice, a lot of times in my drawings, I'll, add, I'll start adding shadow. I'm confident with the shadow that I want to add. But then like up here, I won't add any shadow because I'm not really confident with that shadow. Or I'll get a little too crazy and I'm like, okay, put some shadow here. Put some more shadow here and I put a little shadow over here. And then I go too wild and then I say to myself, I hate that. Why did I mess that picture up? So this is why I don't do too much inking. I will, but I don't. I gotta get back into my comics, which I went out, which means I will start inking more. So, all right, so forearms and um, hands. Let's see who, who sent me that one. Okay, JR slash HP. Can we get a hand slash forearm tutorial? That's my weak point. Not sure you've done one already, but it would be nice to have a detailed tutorial showing all types of angles and foreshortening. Thanks. And somebody else commented to that and said true. Okay. And that was Haiti. Haiti. So let me get some paper. And I really should clean my glasses because every time I put my glasses on top of my head, they get a little oily. And I touch my lenses too. So anyway, um, forearms and hands. Forearms and hands. Okay, so let's start out. Let's start out with the actual arm 
because you can't draw a form without the other part of the arm and shapes again, shapes again. Here is my torso. Why do you keep drawing the torso? Because that's the most important part of the body, the torso. Torso gives you that balance and shows you that strength and um, power. The face shows expressions as well as, as the hands show expressions. So if somebody's sad or they're mad or, or whatever, then you want to show the expression on the face as well as the hands. So this is my torso. This is my center line. This is my collarbone. So this is the delt right here, circle, bicep, tricep, oval, and um, forearms is going to be that cone. I'm going to call it a cone. These are the three shapes that closely resemble the shape of the arm. Where's my pen in my hand? So if I did the muscles, this. That elbow, and if you see, there's not much difference in the uh, shape of the shapes that I use and the actual shapes of the muscles. So, those are the three shapes that you need to start practicing with, and you're just putting them in front of one another. If you want to draw, let's just say this, and let's say this cylinder coming out and then you want to have this like he's like beating on his chest kind of thing and then again like I said just chop where you want that wrist at and then put that hand where you want to put that hand so what I've done I've taken a circle I put an oval in front of that circle, and I've taken a cone, and I put it in front of that oval, and then I stuck my hand where I wanted my hand. Collarbone, collarbone has a little dip, separates the chest. This You still have this left. V, V, going up to the neck, put the head or the chin at the top of that circle. And I guess all three of these can relate, all three or four examples can relate. And then I add more shoulder depending on what I want to do. But we're not into that. We're into the arms, the forearms, and the um, hands. So remember, three shapes. One, two, three. Makes for the arms. Take those, play with those as much as possible for shortening. Now, when you lift this up, if it's down, when you lift it up, it's just going to be another circle. It's going to be another circle. If you see just a little bit of the side to it, just kind of like that. Like that, making that smaller the same way if I did a cylinder, and it goes way back. Just kind of like round that off like this. Like that, like almost like a bullet, I guess. And it's got to be round too. So if this is, where was it at? Let's say if I put a point right here, the point is going to be like right there and it's going to round that off like that so yeah and go back but as I say play with that as much as possible three shapes three simple shapes always master your shapes I say that over and over again uh, whatever this is gonna be there this is gonna be here this one's gonna be behind it maybe he's reaching behind his back to get a sword And before you do the hands, just always do more of a square, square or, or oval kind of. That way you will get the size of the hand that you want for that arm. So you have this tricep, goes to the elbow, which goes to the forearm. Now the forearm, as I said, just keep, keep practicing. Practice with that, those three shapes, those three shapes over and over and over again until you get the length right, until you get comfortable with it, and then you'll, you'll be able to draw arms in any position. For shortening, we've got it for, for shortening. To, I'm just thinking real quick, real quick as it's getting late. So if this is a, if this is a cylinder, no, not cylinder, a cone, 
street cone. These are orange traffic cones like this in the street. Orange traffic cones. You cut this base off. You're going to have the back circle and you're going to have the front circle. So draw the back circle and then draw the front circle wherever you want it. And then line that up. That's the best way to do back foreshortening when you're doing a cone. You don't have to have the point. You can, but you're going to chop it off at the wrist. So the best thing is, as I say, back circle, which is this would be this front circle, which is here, and you can place the front circle anywhere inside or outside of this, depending on the angle that you are looking for. Let's just say right here, if I put the circle right here, some is in, some is out, some part of it is in, some part of it is out. From the top, this to that, right? And then I can put, I'll just use that as a leg, the other, the other part, like down like this. And here's my foot. So this guy could be sitting, it could be kneeling. You put your, your crotch here upside down house <clears throat> so this guy could be kneeling oval uh, cylinder cylinder not cylinder come on Brian get with it get with it I've been drawing for an hour now um, cone and then your foot so by using these same three shapes over and over you can do arms and legs be more like that and this is, this is going to come up like that because that's the shape of the leg it's going to come around and down because you have to have room for that crotch. So you got to make the room for that crotch. So three shapes, three shapes. Practice that, practice that. Stack them and put them in front of each other. The more you put it in front of each other, the more of a foreshortening perspective shot you're going to get. Chop that off. Here's my hand. Whichever, wherever the thumb is going to be. All right, so let's work on some of the hand. Oh, for, let's get actual forearm now. The forearm is do the bicep. Got to do the bicep. The forearm coming down is going to be shaped like this. It's going to be wider here and goes down here into the wrist. Now, the bicep is kind of like a football, kind of. Your, your delt is going to go over the side of it like that and then into the chest like that. So you have this piece here. Now the, the, the form is going to separate right here. You have the separation muscle and that goes to the thumb. Where's my thumb? Let's draw a hand real quick. So let's just say this is my thumb. That is going to go over to the thumb side. Now there's not, there, there are a few muscles but a lot of times people don't draw that because there's just too many stringy muscles that are in the forearm and you don't really want to get overly powerful arms so okay that's like the front of the forearm it, like I said, it's going to go toward the toward the muscle you're going to have wow got me drawing forearms how is that how is that, that, that go how does that go and for some strange reason i just lost that forearm drawing it's the open palm but that's not what I wanted to do with the open palm. Okay, now I got it, got it back. I had, I had to use a thing. There is a muscle that comes out here from in between your delts and your, and it curves around. Like I say, it goes toward the, goes toward the thumb. And there are other muscles in between. So you don't really want to keep drawing those because they twist. They twist. They twist. Because this thing, where is it at? It goes here. There's two bones. There's a bone here and a bone here. And when you turn it, those bones cross one another. They go in front of one another, which, which makes this lump that brings that down to the thumb. And unless you're crazy powerful, then you really won't see that. But just know that there's two bones here. Is the one bone, where is that, where is it, where is it? There's like the one bone, what does that bone look like? Cause I have a little skeleton guy. It's got the one bone here and you have the two bones that are like connected to this. And it goes 
to the wrist. And whenever these, when you twist your arm, these bones kind of cross over one another. And it makes that lump because they cross over one another. So, what was I gonna do? What was I gonna do with that one? You're always gonna have your thing and it's gonna, it's gonna, like I said, it's gonna go, it's gonna cross over into the, the thumb. And this is probably like the only muscle I usually draw on the forearms is this lump here that goes over and every blue moon, every blue moon I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Let me do this, let's do this. Stop that, I'm trying to draw a torso. So you have your bicep right here. You have that muscle that comes down, as I say, it comes down and it's like this, it goes in. You have another one that kind of comes in like that and I think one that comes out, but you have just so many twisted ones. So I would only do like this one. Here's your bicep, here's your, your tricep, here's your elbow, which is right there. You see that? All right, hands, hands, quick hands, and I'm doing. I'm trying to do a tutorial on fist, 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 fist. So first thing, what angle? What angle? See, so here's my here's my forearm. Here's my forearm. You know, it's gonna be fat right here, and it's gonna go. It's gonna go narrow here. Now notice the hand. I did that not too long ago. This part of the hand goes straight, this part of the hand goes out. So if I'm gonna do my wrist, this is gonna be, the hand has gotta be like this. I used to draw hands like this. Here's my thumb, here's my fingers, and this part would come out and this part would come, because nobody showed me. But this is straight, you have this, you have this, and your thumb comes out, this finger, this is gonna be straight, and this is gonna be straight too. So if you do this one and this one, the other two are pretty simple. And this actually goes up to that little baby finger. Okay, so just remember when you're drawing, this is gonna be kind of straight, pretty much straight. Hands, when I draw a hand, I'll draw a box. Um, I'm trying to think because, yeah, I'm trying to think. If I'm drawing a hand, a lot of times I'd have to take a drawing to do. Let's just see if I can mess this up in ink. My wrist, my hand, let's just say it's gonna be this way. Okay, here's my box. Here's my, uh, depend, again, depends. Like that, you know it's gonna be your thumb, however your thumb wants, wants to go, however your thumb is positioned. Again, you can do the small finger, you can do this finger. And you can do that finger and cut in, and you can do this finger and cut down. But it all depends on that box, what what um, what um, angle, or position you want to put that box. Same thing with this. If he's holding the ball, I would put that box back like that. Which was the thumb? The thumb is where's the thumb at? Thumb is on the inside. Okay, so I do a circle, and then I put my thumb wherever I want my thumb. Then of course I'm gonna do my finger, my other finger, my other finger, and my other finger, and then I can put the bowl inside that. But it starts out with, with a square. So like this one, you're always gonna have this circle. So what if I do my box like this? Angle your box. Not even a box, it's a slab. Put that circle where it's going to be your palm and then connect your thumb to that. And of course, again, here and here. And then just kind of round that off once you get that. Unless you're doing a really, really, really close up of a hand, a lot of people won't notice your mistakes. I am trying to find a figure that I have done something with so I can just easily draw a hand, add a hand to it. These guys are fists. These guys are not really doing anything. Uh, if 
if I'm drawing uh, something in the person's hand. And one thing you can do, which is the, probably the best thing you can do, is get your camera phone. I'm turning my phone off. Get your camera phone and then take a picture of everything. Take a picture of your hand. Set it up or have somebody take a picture of your hand, you know, holding a gun or whatever. If, I, if I'm going to do a weapon, I'll draw the weapon first. Then I will put the hand around it, like if the, the, the butt of the gun, the butt of the gun, the handle of the gun is like that. Then I will put my palm, my square, is my blue. Always want to run away when I need you. Around it, like that. Then I will do my fingers. Fingers are just ovals. If I need to do another finger, I'll do it. Now, the, now there are three joints, one, two, three, and the finger, but for comics, you tend to just do two, unless you're doing really close up of um, the hand. It works. And then put the others around the gun. Yeah, this one like that, this one like that, come in around the gun, and then of course you have your palm, or your thumb. gun is going to come like that and this finger is holding the trigger and then you have your gun I know that's kind of screwed up it's kind of screwed up and small so I am sorry for that all right let's do some just quick hands square of course I showed you that center line square center line palm palm your thumb that, that will come off the the, the uh, square too and then you have that one two joints for your thumb and of course your fingers which we won't get into but this one actually goes this one can actually be traced up into this finger so it's going to be like that and then it goes into that finger so if I'm doing from the side and these are rough hands just practice this until you master it more like this so this is the side and if you if you chop my finger off it's like it's like it has that shape to it so you're going to have your thumb, <clears throat> you're going to have this comes up and goes up under here. Low battery, 15%. Okay, so I'm going to have to stop this and then charge up my phone and then do it again. So let's just and finish it. And let's just do this. So it's going to go up to your finger. This is going to come down to your thumb, however you want to put your thumb like that. This finger is always going to be seen. This finger is always below this finger here. So you only have to draw like two fingers. So let me screw it up in ink like that. Side, you know, and if you want to bend, uh, put your other fingers down. Don't my, don't my thing just cut off. You can do that to the side, but you're going to have this square. You're always going to have the square when you draw your hands because this is a square and I'm trying to brush now. But whenever you tighten your hand up, the square becomes more of a roundness like this because these fingers this finger is going to come in this finger is going to come in i think this is going to be the only straight finger and this finger is going to come in a little bit to give you that curve and then of course you're going to have that palm and the thumb is going to come up like that just little two joints like that but remember this curve and these fingers come in they don't go like this and the thumb like that they go in they go this one you know this one is the highest knuckle this one is that lower and this one is lower because they go in, they, they come in like this. So let me charge up my phone and then I will continue this in a split second. All right, I'm back after about an hour or so, charged up to about 75%. That should be enough for me to get through this video. So I last left off on this one so i'll do the next one and remember i didn't i did this one more square it's, it goes down it goes down like this at an angle because your palm is like that so if you're doing the opposite side that means this fat part of the palm over here is going to be over there so you just draw this line like this draw that and then your thumb is going to be like right down right there right there then you will have your three fingers three fingers one two three Remember this finger here is the highest point, so you're going to see that one, this one, and then this one. 
like that. And that's just if you have your hand, and you go, of course it goes up into your knuckles, which are which going, why is it I can't talk, and even worth talking, goes up into your back of your hand. That has a name to it. I don't know what that name is. So when you when you when you straighten your hand actually goes down. You see that that's that's kind of that's kind of normal when you straighten your hand up. So it's going to go down to that wrist. What did I just say? It goes down. This is going to be up, and this is going to be down. And of course, you're going to have the like that that palm like that. <clears throat> it's going to go down. It's not going to go so much like. Like, you know, but it is going to go, look at the camera, turn your arm. It is going to go down when you do this. It's not, you know, like crazy like that, but you do have the little sloping part of it down. So if you decide to bend your fingers, you can bend your fingers however you want. And remember, I only use, I use two joints unless, um, is it other finger? Unless I'm doing a, a close up of the hand, then I'll use the third one. But you can't get this too far from that. You don't want that way, 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 way back. Like it should stop probably about, it should be about right here. So when you're doing it, you have to kind of remember where stuff is at or same way as the body, not make it too long. And of course, like I said, you're going to see when, when I, let's see if I can do this. When I turn it this way, you're going to see that back of that palm is twisted a lot, but you're going to see this part where the thumb is, that little piece of the palm, twist it like that. There you go. You see this little meaty part right here. So you will see that. And then you're going to see those three fingers right there, these three fingers. You won't see this little guy because he's tucked behind. Just like if you do it this way, you won't see these other two because they're tucked behind that one. So start out with the square. <laughs> Time for some more paper. Use this one. So, however, you decide to draw your character. I don't know if you're going to draw. Um, a fist or if you're going to draw like a hand. You start out kind of like with that basic shape and to do a fist. I've shown a fist many number of times that so far I forgot because I forgot. So you, you're going to have your thumb here. Start out with the square. Let's do that all over again. Start out with the square, curve around, and you're going to have your thumb here. Like that. Then this is going to go up like that like a reverse C, and then it's going to turn into a Y. That gives you the illusion of your fingers being tucked in, but again, you're going to see that second finger. And I always drop this top part. It's not, I drop it down like, see that little, that little slope, and I drop that slope down like that. Now, if you want to put the other piece of thumb there, you can. A lot of times I don't. I just bring this really close. And all depends on how big a drawing you have. If my drawing's hand was this size, no one would know that. Is that thumb going over here on the outside or inside? No one would know that um, you can't see the other finger or, you know, something is not you know, in proportion, especially if. You know, I'm concentrating on this hand shooting a blast and his face being, you know, whatever. Is that thumb? I don't know. The thumb goes in or out. Dyslexia. No, I don't have dyslexia. Just like to use that as an excuse. So if I, and I'm going to screw this one up. Sorry, like my camera just cut off. I was like, I just cut you back on. So one thing you can do is this. If drawing the hand, this is the front of the hand, okay? This is the bot the um, this is your palm. You can just kind of see where your fingers are gonna go. Like say I put one finger up here. So I have like three more holes, and then I'll put like one finger here. 
one finger here, one finger down like that. And then you had that small palm and then you had that um, fat part of the palm. Whenever I draw an arm, if it's not straight out to the side, if it's almost coming at you, I'll do this and then I'll put that on top of that, kind of like this is that twist. Then bicep, however I want my bicep, which is just going to be a circle, and then that delt, which goes right into that chest, like that. I think this hand is wrong. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's like when you see something and you know something is wrong, but you just can't figure it out if the thumb should be on the inside or the outside or whatever. Look at it and say, huh, what's wrong with my hand? I don't know why I just wasted 30 seconds doing that. This is why I love comics. Because you can do all kinds of crazy things. You get some lats under there, a little bit of lats under there, chest there. So, um, connecting that with the wrist. Okay, so you're, gonna, you're just going to come up and you're just going to, it's going to come up there. And then this, you're going to kind of make that almost flat almost flat almost and of course it's going to widen widen out so if you're just if you're doing this doing your triangle then cutting it off and then putting your hand wherever you want your hand palm fingers palm fingers comes down and then you do that and then your bicep. I'm trying to think because I'm gonna end this video before it becomes like two hours long. Recap hands connecting to the wrist. I showed you the on the other one where um, your wrist stop at your crotch. This is halfway down, if I'm not mistaken. It's maybe like at the second, second ab, but everybody's abs are different. So just say like halfway down the body, not to the, the belly button, which is, I think, I believe in the third set of abs. Remember that's gonna end up in a point. It's gonna be like that. Some of your um, tricep, this is always a point right here, and this separates a bicep and a tricep. I'll do that better again. You have this point like that. That's how this thing is shaped. Your bicep is here. Your tricep is behind that. This comes to a point. You have this, and it separates that, and that goes to the thumb. It's like two, one here and one there on the inside, and it goes to the thumb. So I think I'm going to call this one a day for these lessons. If you have any other questions, please write me. I will get back to you. I've been lazy about that, recapping. Um, if it's something that you want to learn how to draw, not say, oh, Brian, can you teach me how to draw Batman or Bruce Lee? Because that's not helping anybody but you. If it's something that can benefit others, then I will, I will um, do a video on it. So, because that's what teaching is all about. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I need to find a good thumbnail somehow, some way, so that I can actually put it up and make it look interesting. All right, that's going to be it. Uh, if you stayed this long, then you will become a great artist. I, I, I prophesy on you right now because if you stayed up to this video and want to watch the end of this video, two thumbs up, baby, two thumbs up. All right, so subscribe if you stayed this long. You have enough energy to subscribe if you haven't, and tell a friend. So that's going to be it because I will ramble. You know me. Those people who have been with me for long know that I will ramble like I'm doing now. I will see you guys in the next video. Keep drawing. See you later.